Hello again and welcome to our August edition of Quick Kit. Links to everything we mentioned will be down in the description below. Let's get straight into it. Earlier this month, Blackmagic announced a pretty massive price reduction of their Ursa Mini Pro 12K. It's now retailing at just £4,469, excluding VAT, which now puts it at the same price point as Sony's FX6, the Red Komodo, the Ursa G2, and a touch above the Canon C70. We reviewed the Ursa 12K last year, and it impressed us at its much higher price point then. And at almost half the price now, it's an incredibly unique and compelling option for people looking at a sub £7,500 cinema camera. If you haven't, check out our in-depth review via the link in the description below. Baxis have released their new Cine 8. We've had a Cine 8 in our showroom for a while for us to test, and it's a nice little unit. It is essentially an 8 inch Full HD 1500 nit peak brightness touchscreen monitor with a built in Storm 3000 receiver, which you can use with Vaxxas Storm 1000 and 3000 transmitters. The monitor is really nice and sharp. It has a good feature set, a rock solid wireless system, decent options for picture in picture, as well as all your usual features for monitors aimed at this market. It's great to see Vaxxas updating their wireless system with this kind of solution, as I have found their TXRX sets to perform really well especially when it comes to signal reliability. The Aperture 600D Pro has been in our studio for a few months now. We've used it as a key light on pretty much all of our B-roll over that time, and it has been an absolute workhorse. So when Aperture announced 600X Pro, which is essentially a bicolor 600D Pro, I got quite excited. It will be capable of a variable CCT between 2700 and 6500 Kelvin. We haven't got a 600X Pro into test yet, but looking at Aperture's photometrics, we can see that the 600D Pro is much brighter at 5600 Kelvin than the X, but that isn't surprising. However, this is still an incredibly bright bicolor fixture, so if this is something that you will use more than the 600D Pro's increased brightness, then the 600X might be a solid fixture for you. With our 600D Pro in the studio, we've been using a large Bowens amount Okta that I grabbed off Amazon years ago, as it's much larger than the light dome that Aperture currently offer. However, with the announcement of the 600X, also came their new Light Dome 150, which is a modifier I've been waiting for from Aperture for a while. It uses the same quick setup system as the Light Dome 2, is 150cm in diameter, features a Bowens mount, comes with two diffusion strengths and a 45 degree grid, all inside a nice little carry bag. I'm so excited to get one of these in, as having to keep our larger modifiers formed for speed of operation makes storing them a bit of a pain. So having this quick system on a modifier this large will be a massive benefit for us, as well as any other people wanting a really nice large soft light source for their Bowens mount fixture. Aperture have also reduced a few of their prices for some of their lights, which you can see here. Availability has been really difficult with Aperture lights though, so fingers crossed they can handle the extra demand that these lower prices may create. Earlier this month, Canon announced two new products, their latest 4K XF camcorder, the XF605, and a new broadcast lens the 10x16 KAS-S 8K. We took a look at the 605 earlier this month in a video, and all in all, the Canon XF605 is a fantastic new addition to the XF line. It's essentially an XF705 squeezed into a smaller body with new features added at a more affordable price point. Whether a fixed lens camera is for you will be down to your shooting style and production, but the 605 looks to be a very compelling option at the sub £4,000 price point. If you want to learn more, check out the full video via the link in the description. Tamron have created several really solid E-mount lenses, and they have announced two new really exciting ones for full-frame E-mount cameras. A 28-75 f2.8 G2 and a 35-150 f2 to f2.8. The 28-75 G2 is Tamron's second generation of their 28-75 and is stated to have improved optical and autofocus performance. This will have some stiff competition, but could be a solid choice. The 35-150 looks to be a pretty unique option. Its range is pretty good and the variable aperture looks decent too, though Tamron hasn't released many details yet so we don't know where the aperture ramps, how much it weighs and how much it's going to cost. But I'm really excited to test it as soon as I can as it could be a really nice unique option. We've mentioned Sprig a few times in our recent videos and earlier this month they released a 3816 version of the Sprig aimed to be used with larger camera packages. These have a larger diameter to the smaller quarter 20 version which means you'll be able to feed more or larger cables through them. Both sizes are priced the same, just £18 for a pack, however you get 6 sprigs in a pack when buying the quarter 20 version and 3 when grabbing the 3.8.16 version. They really are helpful when trying to make sure your cables are run nicely 
and with these new larger ones, I can now see them being used on large camera packages with more cables on them. Portkey's announced two new monitors, the PT5 and the HS7 t Metal. The PT5 is a new budget conscious HDMI monitor from Portkey's that features a 5 inch 500 nit 1920x1080 touchscreen and incredibly light body made from ABS plastic. It's really low cost, so it could be a great option for anyone looking to either pick up their first on camera monitor or for someone who wants one of the lightest HDMI monitors on the market. The new HS7 t Metal is a 7 inch 1920x1200 monitor with a peak brightness of 1200 nits, has an improved aluminium body and integration with the Axoon Cine i2 Pro and Hollyland Mars 400S. I haven't tried this wireless receiver mount out yet, but this could be a cool little setup with one of them for an affordable director's monitor setup. We have used X-Rite's charts in-house for years, so I was surprised to hear that X-Rite have actually rebranded as Calibrite now, and they have just released a new grey balance mini to sit with their Color Checker Classic Mini. This small little chart could be an affordable and compact way to get an 18% grey card so you can quickly and easily grab perfect exposure and white balance. However, if you can stretch your budget, I think their Color Checker Passport options offer a more versatile and robust solution. Sigma announced a 150-600 f5-6.3 to sport zoom lens for Sony E or Panasonic L mount cameras earlier this month and we managed to check it out early and create a video review. Overall, the lens has a fantastic range, is incredibly well built, features great optical stabilisation, snappy autofocus, renders detail well but it's a tad slow but this is pretty normal in these types of lenses and I dread to think the size and price it would be if it was faster. If you want to learn more, check out the full video via the link in the description below. Atmos and Canon released firmware earlier this month for the Ninja 5 Plus and EOS R5 which will allow you to record 8K ProRes RAW up to 30fps or 5K ProRes RAW up to 60fps. When recording this externally, there is no recording limit in the 8K mode unlike when recording internally with the R5. This could be a decent option for R5 owners wanting to record 8K RAW without having to worry about the recording limits. Just bear in mind that the run times in ProRes RAW in 8K are still quite short. 1TB worth of 8K 30p will get you roughly 40 minutes of record time. You will need the Ninja 5 Plus to take advantage of this, which could be quite a hefty investment, but it's good to have an option to shoot 8K RAW with the R5 without it overheating now. Let us know if this is something you're interested in testing down in the comments below. Atmos are also currently running a loyalty deal where any owners of the following Atmos recorders can receive a discount on a Ninja 5 Pro kit. You can find more details about it via the link in the description below. As an owner of an M1 MacBook Pro, I was excited to see that Blackmagic have released Resolve 17.3, which should improve the performance of Resolve on M1 machines up to three times. M1 is a completely different architecture to Intel's processors, so it has taken some time for software developers to update their programs to take full advantage of Apple's new chip. Bright Tangerine have released their lift field system for the FX6. This consists of a top plate, quick release base plate, and mini AXL, which is their monitor bracket. The Mini AXL is another option for replacing the original mount for the Sony FX6's monitor. This provides more flexible positioning, drag adjustment and sag free support for the FX9 loop. The whole system looks just as nice as their other rigging that Bright Tangerine have been bringing out recently and I'm looking forward to getting a set rigged onto one of our FX6's. Right, let's get into our quickfire honourable mentions. Links to details about these are in the description below. Ari have released a beta version of SUP 7.1 for the Alexa Mini LF. This features a 2.8K LF 1 to 1 anamorphic recording mode, sync shift via a camera access protocol, lens data archive files for several Arri Cine lenses, and various bug fixes and system stability improvements. Adobe has announced they will acquire Frame.io in a $1.27 billion deal. Vocas have released a range of accessories focused on adapting LPL lenses to RF mount, with some specifically designed for Komodo. HMI has announced a new series of black mist filters within their Reverring series and this consists of either a non-detachable version or a clip-on to be used with their VND Evo ring. DAT released their new budget-conscious VMic D4 on-camera microphone. Shape released a belt designed for ACs wanting quick access to various things while on set. DJI announced the Mini SE, a new compact entry-level drone. Siru have announced the Mars lens kit, which includes their popular 24, 35, 50 and 75 1.33 times anamorphic lenses, with housings more tailored towards cine use than stills. Tascam has partnered with Canon, Fujifilm and Nikon to create an XLR audio interface that will connect to the cameras via their hot shoe adapters. Crosyor announced their new Zoomer unit, which is a universal zoom servo drive which can be mounted to 50mm bars and controlled with the FX6, FX9 or LANK. Blackmagic released Camera Update 7.4.1 for the Ursa Mini Recorder and B-RAW. Feotech announced the Feo Pocket 2 and the Feo Pocket 2S. 
Lauer released piano white versions of some of their cine lenses to match with white cinema cameras. And lastly, the Sidus Link app has a new 1.6 update, adding a range of new features. If you enjoyed this, please make sure you hit subscribe ready for next month's quick kit. And let us know what kit you've picked up this month in the comments below. And thank you so much for watching.